Welcome everyone to the SIUE Coaches Show. We're coming to you this time from the brand new lounge in the brand new women's locker room here at SIUE. I'm Jill Pott, and if you've joined us before, you know that this is the place for SIUE Athletics. We'll talk a little basketball. We're even going to talk some softball on this edition of the Coaches Show. Basketball head coaches Amanda Levins and Lennox Forrester join us, and head softball coach Sandy Montgomery is our guest on the SIUE Coaches Show. First up, though, is head men's basketball coach Lennox Forrester and coach uh, getting into a, a part of the schedule where you've got a lot of home games coming up. The team has struggled a little bit away from home this year, played a lot better here at the Bedalabine Center. What do you think the difference has been? Obviously, it's tough to play on the road, but what are some things you've seen there? And, you know, you, you said it, you know, just the toughness as far as playing on the, on the road. And, and we have to make it as just as tough for opponents coming in uh, the Bedalabine Center. But uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, one thing you got is that home court advantage, which your fans come out and they're cheering you on. That gives you uh, a lot more energy. Uh, than, than, than playing on the road. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, I look at it as a, as a team that's growing and, and getting better. And, um, and again, you know, we're stepping into the venues like Northwestern, Illinois State, Iowa, Indiana, Northern Iowa. Those are some tough places to play. Uh, even Murray State, we got them at home coming up on Wednesday. But at the same time, that's tough to play at their place. So, you know, I, I don't get too caught up in, you know, we haven't won a road game yet. Uh, just because of the quality of the opponent that we're playing on the road. It, it is, quite frankly. I mean, it's it's a tough opponent for any team, let alone a team that is making this transition to Division One. Uh, most certainly, most certainly. And you know, like you said, we got some home games coming up, and you know, we gotta we gotta do our job at home by taking care of of the home court advantage. Um, you know, playing with a lot of energy. Um, the last home game, I wasn't too pleased because I, I thought we didn't play with any energy at all. Um, but uh, here it comes, we got eight, seven more. And um, you know, our goal is to try to win all seven. And, and you've scheduled like this on purpose. Last year, the team had a, a road stretch at the end of the year that no team really um, mm -hmm. would envy going from North Dakota, and being <laughs> on the road, going all the way out to California, right. coming back for half a day, and then on the bus to, to Fort Wayne, Indiana. And a very tough stretch. And not just playing basketball, but for, for, for guys missing class and, and the other stuff that they have going on. You purposely scheduled this year backloaded with some home games. Make it a little easier on the guys, right? Well, most certainly, you know, like you said, number one is, is academically, how these guys are doing academically and, and, and whether you're setting them up, uh, you know, and put them in position to be successful in the classroom. And, and also, you know, I think it's so uh, crucial to, to get our guys an opportunity to, to play at home. Hopefully we can go on a run here, end the season, and, and build something special for next year too. Um, you know, it, it's such a long season and what we're going through is so hard that, um, you know, the, the, the thing that you remember most is, is how you finish out the year. And um, I think it was so important to, you know, try to end the year on a, on a high note, give our guys um, a, a lot of things to work forward to, you know, you know coming up for next year, uh, especially with, when we got so, so much coming back. Uh, for next year. Let's talk about the schedule a little bit. As you get into the month of February, there's uh, quite a few non-Division One opponents. For, for folks that, that maybe don't get it and they look at it and they say, I thought you were moving to Division One, you know, why are you playing these kind of opponents? It, it's kind of really the position you're in in the transition phase, isn't it? Uh, most certainly. Um, you know, in the o OVC conference, uh, most of the team, pretty much all the teams play two non-D ones. We're able to play four right now because we're not quite um, in, in the regular schedule. Um, but for our guys, you know, I mean, you're talking about just the strength of schedule and how tough it is. You want to always have something. Hopefully, you know, we can go out, take care of business uh, by beating these non-division ones, and you know, kind of get your confidence level going back again. Um, so th those, are, that's the reasoning uh, for all that. You know, to to where you're struggling a little bit. I remember last year we went on a nine-game. Uh, losing streak, and and we were hoping that we had uh, a non-division one to hopefully say we beat and get our confidence level back going again. So you know those are part of the reason why we have four non-division one. And, and that'll change next year because you've got the uh, Ohio Valley Conference schedule. You'll play the full conference schedule next year, so it'll be a lot easier that way. A lot easier, and and you know we'll we'll scale it back to two. Um, you know, but uh, with the conference schedule and how it's laid out, uh, to where you know in the second part of the year. Um, you don't have room to, to, to play um, non you know non conference play you know except for probably your your bracket busters so you know for for us we we're trying to take advantage uh, while we can. 
Let, let's talk about a player that, that I feel like has kind of stepped up a little bit, and you and I talked about him uh, after that mm -hmm. Northwestern game. That's Cornelius Chad. He scored 25 points in the Northwestern game. And one of the things you said to me is you weren't surprised because of how hard he's been working in practice. And, and certainly, you know, I, I think he's definitely stepped up his play and in practice. And it all starts from practice. And, and sometimes guys may look at it like, hey, you know, I had a great game. Now, where did you start from? And, and uh, for the last couple of weeks, he's really – um, stepped it up in practice, practice hard, compete hard, um, and he's done so again, you know, even after the Northwestern game, after sc 20, scoring 25 points. So hopefully that's a, a stepping stone to the future is what he can bring to the table, and, and by him continue to do so, he's going to continue to get better to where he's going to be a solid piece uh, of the puzzle for us. And you told me earlier in the year that it was kind of a process with Cornelius Chat to to get him to, to drive to the basket a little bit, to penetrate a little bit, instead of just settling for jump shots. And, and, and he's, he's learning now that, you know what, you can score in different ways. You can score by shooting threes, you can score by um, getting to the basket for layups, and you also can score at the free throw line. And um, he, I thought he did a tremendous job of that um, against Northwestern. I thought he was at the line, he was making threes for us, and he was making mid-range jump shot. And because he's such a good scorer, uh, you can't just live by the jump shot alone. You got to figure out ways to, to put points on the board, especially uh, with a team like ours that, you, you know, we wish we had, I wish we had more guys that can, you know, step up and score uh, points for us. Let's switch gears just a little bit here as we uh, wrap up with Coach Forrester. Have, has something with you or has there been any kind of change over the last four years in you as a head coach, uh, starting out obviously, your first head coaching job, have you evolved a little bit over the last four years? Well, certainly, you know, uh, it, it's a process, and I, I can say this for pretty much every head coach in the country that, you know, every year you're learning and you're you're, you're getting better, and uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's a learning experience. Um, I think this transition have have really uh, pushed me to become a better coach. Um, and, um, you know, I, it's a situation that I'm, I'm proud to be in. I'm happy to be in. I'm still excited about, you know, focus. One thing I haven't lost is the, the focus as far as, you know, what needs to be done to, to hopefully someday get us to, to win championships. Coach, thanks so much for the time. Lots of home games coming up, so it should be a good ending to the year. Thank you. I hope it is. That's Cougar head coach Lennox Forrester. We're back. There's more to come right here on the SIUE Coaches Show. Welcome back to the SIUE Coaches Show. We're joined now by Cougar Head Women's Coach Amanda Levins. And Coach, as we sit here today, you're on a little bit of a roll. Uh, the girls have won four straight games and uh, all against Ohio Valley Conference opponents. Do you feel like you're kind of hitting a stride right now? I think so. I think our team has finally learned how to close games out. They've definitely learned how to practice. Um, since we've come back from Christmas, you know, we had a couple practices right away when we got back that weren't what we would have liked them to you know come to practice with the kind of energy that they brought and stuff but since then we haven't really had a bad day of practice and we told our team that directly correlates to how they play in games. I, I don't think people realize that you say that they know how to close out games or know how to win games. You have to learn how to to win a game don't you and, and, and that's why you know sometimes you get on these kind of roles. Yeah and you know the Eastern Illinois game I think really really hurt and I know as, as coaches it really hurt us and it hurt the players and since then I think they've been extremely motivated not to feel like that again. You know Eastern Illinois is a very good team and we had them in a position where we could have closed the game out and we didn't and we lost in overtime so I think since then when they have the opportunity to close things out we don't always do it perfect but we do enough it se has seemed like during this stretch and um, we have found a way to win. As coaches, that has to make you pretty happy that, that that's the way they responded because obviously the other way is, oh man, tough loss and kind of fold the tents, but they've gone the other way. They've used it as motivation. Absolutely. And, you know, we were down by 17 in that Eastern Illinois game and came back and took a three point lead, and that was a, a 20 point swing. And I think in our players' minds, they're like, we're, we're pretty good right there. You know, wow, we're pretty good. Um, and I think they finally believed that they were a good team and they believed that they could win and, you know, the confidence and, I, I hate to use the word swagger because I don't, I don't know if that's what it is, but I think that they have a little bit of swagger now and they have a lot of confidence and belief in each other that they can step on the floor and compete with anybody. One of the things you have told me is that you want OVC opponents specifically to 
uh, not like playing you. They don't want to look forward to playing you. Do, you. do you feel like that's kind of the case, that, that you're getting that, where they're like, oh, you know, we got a tough game. Here comes SIU Edwardsville. Um, you know, I, I just want our team to be known when they step on the floor that they're going to be a hardworking, hard-nosed, tough team, and that we're not going to be an easy win for anybody. They're going to have to come out and beat us for 40 minutes if they want that victory. So I think our team is hopefully getting that reputation. You know, I can't really speak for the other teams, but we're, you know, we're going into the Ohio Valley next year with the mindset that we're going to go in and we're going to try to win a championship. So, and I think this year, these 12 games, they give us a great gauge of where we need to improve at to, to have a chance to do that next year. You've been a little bit shorthanded this year, which I know is nothing new for you, to be quite honest. The last couple of years, it seems like, you know, we go into the year talking about some depth and then things happen and, and that's not always the case. Yeah. It doesn't seem to have affected you terribly. How, how has that worked that you've been a little uh, short on the bench, but but you're doing well? Yeah, you know, unfortunately, Kate and AJ have had some, some injuries and things like that, but it just has allowed other people to play more minutes and step up and flourish in their roles. And so it's unfortunate for those two, um, but for the other people that are getting the minutes that they would have gotten, I think that they've done a great job stepping up and filling those shoes. And you said sometimes as a coach, you told me that when you look down the bench, you don't have a ton of options. Right. You kind of have who you have to go to <laughs> right. when you have to go to. Yeah, and you know, sometimes you look down, you have four or five guards sitting there and you're kind of calculating in your mind, if I put her in this, that, and now it's like, well, it's her or nobody, you know? So now it's like you don't have a choice and the players understand if they go out there, they have to do their job because there's not really anybody else to, to come in and do it if they don't, they don't do their job when they're on the floor. Usual suspects obviously playing very well. Jasmine Hill, Raven Berry, Sydney Stahlberg, the, the kind of players we talk about a lot. Someone that, that I feel like has stepped up the last few games is Courtney Kenner and, and you know she's kind of taken on a little bit of a leadership role but really has played very well during this stretch. Absolutely, um, just complete basketball game, both ends of the floor, a lot of things that don't show up in the statistics but are important to our team. Um, great defender, extremely tough, gives us another ball handler on the floor in addition to Jasmine. Um, it's tough with two point guards you can outlet to either side and you know it allows Jasmine to get some shots so we had a, a, a little talk with her right before Murray State and I feel like she's really responded. Um, she stepped up and embraced her role when things don't go well on the floor, she's the first person grabbing people and huddling them and talking to them. And, you know, we've always known that Courtney understands how to win and how to, you know, kind of build a, build a program into a winning program coming from Incarnate Word over in St. Louis that has traditionally been very good for girls basketball. So I think she's finally hitting her stride and really understanding that, you know, she's pretty good and her skills are developing and she, in our system, I just think she does a tremendous job. You mentioned that it opens up some, some other things as far as having uh, Jasmine able to take some shots. Did that play into that as well, that, that you wanted to have uh, you know, Jasmine be able to score a little bit, but also maybe take a little pressure off of Jasmine? Well, it just, you know, we, we lost so many games in a row and we were kind of trying everything and trying to give everybody opportunities. And she just, like I said, at Murray State, we, we had a talk with several players and just her response to it, she's kind of never looked back. And as coaches, we talked about this with Michaela Harrod last year. This is what we need you to do. And Courtney's like, okay. And she just has gone out there and, and done it game in and game out since that, you know, conversation. Let's switch gears just a little bit and, and talk about some other roles that you have or some other jobs you do. Mm -hmm. Obviously recruiting, a huge part of your job uh, how does that balance out with trying to prepare for a game when you've got to be out on the road at, at the schedule of, of those players when you're trying to catch them at the right time? Well, you know, we talk to our student athletes all the time about time management, time management, getting ahead. Um, it's exactly like that. We'll take computers with us. We watch film during timeouts, during halftime, pregame. You know, sometimes we try to go to a certain area together, like one or two coaches, sometimes even three. And that way we can watch film while the other person drives. We try to be as smart with those deci decisions as we can. And, you know, sometimes you got to get up early or stay up late. And, and you know, you really have to to love this and honestly staying up early or I'm sorry staying up later getting up early during the season you just it doesn't bother you I think you know when the season's over you're like wow I'm, I'm kind of tired but during the season it, you don't feel it especially when you spend a lot of time on a scout and prepare the team and they go out and execute and you win the game there's not really a better feeling in the world and they always say you know the the players want to see the coaches have to do the things that they do so you're doing exactly what you ask them to do balancing yeah. your time and and, and kind of balancing your schedules yeah and I don't players have any idea you know they're always like you guys are always working you know but to them I, they only really see half of it because they can go take a nap in, during the day and the break in their classes and stuff and um, their their preparation is just it's a lot different than ours and so for us for all the films that we watch they only get an, a little bit of the information but something we've started doing this year is we've asked our team to scout every opponent they get film they get a blank scout and they turn it in and so I think that's really helped them one be better basketball minded 
their IQ has improved. Um, if you look at their scouts, they're pretty right on for what we're going to tell them we want to do. So if nothing else, it prepares them. They're not surprised. And then we you know, give them a few more detailed points and tell them how we're going to defend things or what we want to run, that type of thing. But in terms of what they see on the film, it's very similar to what we see. Well, obviously something's working uh, on the roll. Uh, keep rolling, certainly. And we, thanks for the time, as always. Thank you. That's Cougar head coach Amanda Levins. We're back with more on the SIUE Coaches Show. Welcome back to the SIUE Coaches Show. We're going to switch gears a little bit. While it still feels like winter, the spring is just around the corner, and that means spring sports here at SIUE. And with us now is the head softball coach here at SIUE, Sandy Montgomery. And coach, it's it's been a quite a transition for you over the years here at SIUE. Started out as a player here for the Cougars, a Hall of Fame player at that. Moved to assistant coach. Now getting ready for your 23rd season as the head coach of SIUE softball. Can you believe that? And, and did you think back then that that'd be the case? Oh, absolutely not. You know, you start off, you just, uh, you know, I started off wanting to teach K through 12 and got certified uh, uh, that way. And then, uh, you know, right place, right time, became the head coach and here I am. This has got to be pretty cool on the, on the heels of the first division one, full division one season, eligible for conference play, eligible for uh, the national tournament again. I have to think there might be a little bit of relief that the two years of past are behind you. <laughs> well, you know, it, it was it was a difficult transition, but you know, I think we had a little easier time just coming off the national championship and the, you know, the level of play that we were at than some of our programs. And um, you know, we're excited to to be in the position that we're in and, and certainly ready to get going. With the conference season and all that you have, um, and obviously the preparation that goes into it, this is not something that. I get the feeling you've just been preparing for the last couple of years. This has been a long time coming, hasn't it? Well, it has. You know, we, we've we've tried to uh, continue to build our program every year. You know, when we were Division II, we, we were in the NCAA tournament for, you know, several years in a row and just couldn't win that national championship. And, you know, but every year you try to continue to get better and better. And, you know, we've done that, you know, forever. As long as I can remember, that's been kind of our goal. and. And, um, you know, going into Division One, we really thought we'd change our goals a little bit, but we really haven't. You know, our goals are still to win the conference title and make the NCAA tournament and see what happens. You've spoken to me so much in the past about the players and about getting those players in as freshmen. And by the time they get to be juniors and seniors, you don't have to worry about coaching them up or, or telling them what to expect. It's them telling the younger kids what to expect. Right. We, we've kind of, you know, been fortunate, and I feel very fortunate to have the culture that we have on, in our program. And, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I do recruit a lot of freshmen. I, you know, it's not that I don't like junior college transfers because we've had several very good ones over the years. But, you know, I think it's important that you have consistency and, and that uh, loyalty to the program and, you know, all those little intangibles that you really can't teach that just takes time and experience. and. You know, we, we've kind of built that and, and uh, you know, w whether we're young or whether we're old on a particular year, you know, we still have that culture. You've also got the role as an administrator here at SIUE as a, an associate athletic director. <clears throat> Do you get the opportunity to talk to some of the other coaches as they make this transition? Um, because of your experience as a head coach and, and that culture as you, you talk about building that and, and getting that started in their own programs? Well, you know, every chance I get, you know, I, I you know, I like to have those conversations. You know, I certainly don't know it all, but I, I think I've uh, proven that, you know, I know how to manage people and, and get everybody on the same page. And I think that's half of the uh, battle when you're trying to, you know, win consistently and, and just build an atmosphere and a culture within your program. So, you know, if, if someone wants to talk, I'll be more than happy to, but I don't push it on anyone. So here we are just a, a few weeks away from the season starting, believe it or not, with, with snow and ice on the ground yeah. outside. but. Uh, the, the OVC preseason poll is out. They, they've picked SIUE fourth in their first year uh, in, in full conference play. Is that a fair choice? Do you, do you like where you're picked? Sure. You know, I don't, I don't really care where we're picked, to be honest with you. We could be picked uh, at the bottom for all I care. You know, you've got to come out and you've got to win. And, and uh, you know, it certainly shows respect for our program, which, which we're proud of. Um, you know, Jacksonville State and Tennessee Tech, Tennessee Martin, they've always, you know, been the powerhouses in the OVC. And, you know, we've had our opportunities to play them all in the past and have, have won uh, some of those games. And, 
Um, I think Tennessee uh, Martin is the only one that actually beat us uh, during the time that we played in the last couple of years. So, you know, I think we're in a good situation and a good uh, spot to see what happens. And, and I know the eyes are on us right now. You, you led me in a little bit to my next question, but uh, with that schedule, because you have had the chance to play those OVC opponents over the last couple of years, do you feel like there's going to be in surpri any surprises when you get into conference play for real? No, I really don't. Um, you know, we, we played Jacksonville State last year. We played Tennessee Martin and Tennessee Tech in year one. So we, we know where they're at, and, and it's, it's no different than, you know, playing anybody else on your schedule, except you have now that immediate rivalry that, uh, you know, you feel, and that's always a good thing, having, having those conference rivals. How about the beginning part of the schedule? It gets underway uh, February 11th. You go down to Campbell and, and play the tournament there. Then after that, you go out to Las Vegas and it got some great competition with, with UNLV, the defending national the champions, <laughs> UL, uh, UCLA and, and Tennessee. Right. The early part of the schedule is going to be tough. It is. It's going to be very tough. And, and um, you know, we, we did that uh, to a degree for a reason. Obviously, um, you know, we want to go out and play tough competition and get ourselves ready to play conference play. And, um, you never know who you're really going to get in some of these tournaments. And, and uh, you know, we open up against the University of Virginia, and then you've got Campbell, who's a very good program, and Drexel. Uh, hopefully that's a good opening weekend for us. Uh, and then obviously no one can prepare for playing the defending national champs when you're, you know, coming into your first year of uh, being eligible for postseason play. But, you know, that whole weekend in Las Vegas is going to be very, very challenging. And, um, you know, we certainly know that, and, and our, the kids are excited about it. Um, I'm sure we'll take our lumps, but, you know, we'll get better, and we'll learn a lot about ourselves, and, and I'm hoping by the time we play, you know, I think it's Southeast Missouri State that they won't look so big and bad after playing UCLA and Tennessee. And you said it, too, the kids are excited. I mean, this is obviously what it's mm -hmm. about, too, creating that for the student-athlete and, the, and the, uh, certainly the experience that they get. Right. I, I think, you know, the the – whatever the word I'm looking for, the, the opportunity to play these teams, you know, if you, you approach it the right way, it can be a positive, whether you win or lose. And, and we've tried to do that with our kids. You know, they understand the big picture. You know, we are not as good as UCLA and Tennessee on paper. No question. Nobody's even going to pretend that we are. But, you know, given, given the right day, the right performance out of everybody, we get a good pitching performance. You know, who knows? It, it, you know, it could happen. Stranger things have happened, right? Yeah, we always say you don't play it on paper, right? That's exactly right. But, but we're trying to go, you know, on the premise this year of we need to win the games we should win. And uh, we know what those games are. And, you know, maybe other people will think they know what those games are, and maybe they won't. But, you know, we know what games we should win, and that's what we're going to focus on. And, and uh, we shouldn't beat UCLA. But, you know, that's why you play the game. Coach, thanks so much. Uh, it, it, like I said, it's hard to believe that the spring is almost here, but it is, and uh, certainly we'll be watching you this year. All right, Joe, appreciate the time. That's Sandy Montgomery with us here, the softball season just around the corner. We're back right after this with more on the SIUE Coaches Show. That's going to do it for this edition of the SIUE Coaches Show. Thanks so much to my guests, Amanda Levins, Lennox Forrester, and Sandy Montgomery. Don't forget you can catch all the basketball games home and away on 590 The Fan, KFNS, Sports Radio 1380, and 88.7 FM WSIE. I'll have the call for all of those games. Also, there's still some basketball to come here on CCIN. Randy Carricker, Joe Zidlow, and Mike Gibson have the call for you there. Thanks again. Don't forget to join us. One more edition to come of the SIUE Coaches Show. Thanks again for joining us. I'm Joe Pott from SIUE. So long, everybody.